Hey guys, this is Woodshop Junkies and today I'm going to be installing some additional shelf storage to my small single garage workshop. If you watch my moving shop video, you should remember me mentioning that in this shop I want to utilize as much as possible of the roof in an effort to clear up some space on the floor. So today I'm going to be installing a suspended shelf to store some of the things cluttering up my workshop. But the thing about working in a single garage, every bit of space is precious. So I want the shelf to be able to fold up into the roof and out of the way. So, as always, I'm going to start by sizing up some paper. Okay guys, so the suspended shelf is going to consist out of eight individual bins that are going to form part of the swing assembly, which is what's going to give me the ability to fold it up into the roof to pack it away, or fold it down when I need to gain access to whatever is in the bins. At the center of the swing radius will be a bracket, which will allow me to fix the suspended shelf to the wall and to the roof battens. So, with the panel sized up, the first thing I'm going to start assembling is that bracket. Right, so this is pretty much the roof bracket and while the bulk of the project is going to be assembled using 18mm or 3 quarter inch pine ply, you will notice that some of the components are a bit thicker and I did this by layering more than one sheet of plywood together. Now you will also notice these cutouts I made over here and I installed T-nuts on the outside which I'm going to be explaining a bit more about in a moment. Now the entire project at this stage might not be making a lot of sense but I'm going to be fixing this bracket to the wall and as I go on I promise things will start falling into place. Right, so that's it for the bracket and it seems strong enough, so the next step now is to assemble the 8 bins.
Right, so these are the bins and they will ultimately be fixed to a backboard like this. The backboard will be fixed to the wall bracket using hinges, giving it the ability to swing up and down. But a critical part of this design or the concept is the fact that the bin needs to stay horizontal while the backboard changes from a vertical or open position to the horizontal or closed position. Now, to achieve this, each bin will be fixed at its rear using a piece of piano hinge. Now, you will notice a small step was created here by installing this board slightly higher. And the step was or is to accommodate the piano hinge over there. This will create a pivot point allowing the bin to do this. A secondary pivot will be installed at this point where this cutout was made and link up to the wall bracket. It will be this point responsible for keeping the bin level as the backboard is being folded up and down. So before I start assembling, I'm just going to give everything a quick sand out. So just to demonstrate before I start fixing everything together, this is pretty much what the bin arrangement is going to look like when the shelf is in its stored position. There's going to be two sets of these next to each other with four bins each and able to operate independently. The bins will then be evenly spaced with a little gap between them and fixed at the back with a hinge as I mentioned earlier. The gap between the bins is important so that the bins don't collide when they are moving simultaneously. As for these cutouts, pins will be installed into them to act as pivot points. For now, I'm just using PVC pipe to demonstrate. All these will then be linked together using a plank with corresponding holes to allow the synchronized movement of all the bins. Now, I will admit that part of the assembly was quite awkward, but if I had assembled it first and then tried to hang it, I think it would have been even worse. So, at least it's over now. Okay, so with all the back hinges fixed now, I can start installing the pivot pins. Now for the pivot pins, I'm using an assembly like this, which exists out of a dowel installed on the inside of a piece of PVC pipe. Now I couldn't really find a dowel that was the exact fit for the inside of the pipe, 
So I bought a slightly oversized dowel, cut it into smaller manageable pieces and then using the lathe sanded it down till it was a good fit for the pipe. I then simply glued the dowel on the inside of the PVC pipe and using the mitre saw I cut it into these little pieces like this. And the reason I did this is that I'm hoping that the smooth surface of the PVC pipe will reduce wear over time as this pin is moving inside the, the linkage. The pin will be installed into the cutouts like this using glue and when the glue is cured the pilot hole in the center of the cutout will be used to drill the hole all the way through the dowel. Then when the link is installed a bolt will be added to strengthen the pin and to prevent the link from coming off. Right, so while giving the glue a moment to set, I'm going to tidy up the links by cutting the corners and raftering the edges, just so that it doesn't look so crude. Before installing the link though, I'm going to add washers on the pins like this to act as spacers so that when the shelf is being folded up and down, the link and the bin won't grind up against each other. Now I made the dowel longer so it would protrude slightly. This means that when I add the bolt, the full force will be added to the dowel, while the link will still be free to move. Okay, so with all the pivot points secured and the mechanism seems to be working, all that's left to do is add a few trim pieces around the edges. I want to add gas lifts for a soft open and I need to add a latch to keep the shelf in its stored position. But before I do that, I just want to touch on some of the components that are critical for the operation of this mechanism. Firstly, the pivot points are divided up into sets. One set for each bin plus a set on the wall mount bracket acting as the primary pivot point. The orientation of the two hinges or pivot points within each set with relation to each other needs to be copied exactly for each bin plus on the wall mount bracket. The distance between the sets however are not that important. As you can see from the primary to the first bin is much smaller than from the first bin to the second to the third to the fourth. So with that being said I'm going to assemble the four bins on the left here and then I'm going to start finishing up the project.
Okay, so as you can see, this piece was made to be a bit longer, so it can act as a stopper against the wall there, bringing the whole shelf a little bit forward. I just, I think it looks a bit nicer like that at an angle. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the shelf. So the next step is to get it to latch in place in the roof like that, in its stored position. Okay guys, so that's the shelf latched in its stored position. I needed to add this brace here across so I would have something to latch to. I then added two bolt locks to each shelf to carry the bulk of the weight. And I also added this quick type latch in the center here. But as you can see, it's not carrying any weight at the moment. And the reason for this is that it's not really intended to carry the shelf in its closed position for long periods of time. Instead, it is only intended to momentarily keep the shelf in this position when opening or closing to give me time to close the bolts. Now I did mention I want to add some gas springs to assist when folding up and down, but sadly the ones I purchased are underpowered. I would still need to add gas springs though, either stronger ones or look at some kind of pulley system to assist in carrying the weight of the shelf plus its contents while it is being folded up and down. Considering it's going to be an overhead suspended load, this is going to be a critical safety feature because the last thing I want is this thing coming down uncontrollably as it can cause some serious injury. But that is it for this video. The shelf obviously has a bit of a weight limit, I mean I need to be able to push it up and close it up there but at least for now I can start getting some of the clutter out of my space. I will be posting more info on this build to my website and putting the link below when I do, so be sure to look out for that. Now my brother has mentioned to me that he thinks this design can be refined and repurposed for closed storage in small bedrooms. Let me know what you think of that idea. Is that something I should invest time in exploring? But with that being said, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe. Till next time, cheers. cheers.